Roll Tide. What's going on, guys? Zach and Spence here from iTrends, bringing you guys another watch list on Sunday night. Today is the 2nd, the 2nd of October. Happy October, new month in the market. Octobers are not always the best month in the market for the buyers, that is. Um, usually we see some red in September and some red in October, and we definitely got some red in September. A lot of those weekly and monthly candles look very, very ugly on a lot of stocks. Um, we will be looking at some of the weeklies or some of the weekly charts for some of these stocks. Um, but going forward, let's just take a look at what we have on the week. So what's really, really important that we have this week in as far as news is the non-farm payrolls. That data comes out on Friday at 8.30 in the morning with the unemployment rate. So that's really, really important. And everybody in the market will be watching that. So uh, make sure you are attentive to that. We do have some various other slightly important news events that are coming throughout the week, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, et cetera, um, early in the morning. But non-farm payrolls is by far the most important thing. So we just mentioned how we had lots of selling pressure, um, not just this week, but all of September. We are definitely a little bit oversold. That doesn't mean that we're going to be, you know, have a bounce to the moon like we did last time in June when we had this big, big bounce. That's not what we're saying here, but we do have to be cautious and mindful of any type of bounce in the market. Um, we don't have a crystal ball. We can't tell when that bounce is going to occur. There is definitely a lot of selling pressure that's occurring, um, but we cannot tell when the bounce is going to occur. So all we have to do um, to best prepare, prepare ourselves is watch the 10 year and then watch the VIX as well to help guide us through. So any selling in the 10 year yields um, will provide a little bit easier um, access, if you want to call it that, to the buyers buying the market back up a little bit. Now, with that being said, it's going to be very difficult for Spence and myself. It's it's a little difficult for us to see SPY getting back above this 370 to 375 zone. This is really a, a five-point zone in here. Um, it's going to be a little difficult for SPY to get above that. If it does get above that, however, it's going to have a very difficult time as well in this 380 to 385 area as well. So it's like if we do get above that 370 zone, we don't have very much room on the upside above that before we need even more selling pressure. So with that being said, um, we've got a lot of selling pressure above us. Honestly, all we need is a little bit of a relief on this RSI. You can see that it's actually oversold all the way in the bottom here. Um, what we were look, we were, what we would be looking for, or what's ideal, is just a little bit of a cool off. So that can come in any type of consolidation. So in consolidation, you saw that we actually went oversold and bounced out of oversold territory. We can consolidate so we don't have to necessarily bounce in the market to see a relief, although that would obviously provide a larger relief, something like this, where we can actually have further selling pressure um, and not be super overextended to the downside, right? Where it gets a little bit harder to short some stocks, especially ones that are really, really low already, and then also doesn't increase um, that implied volatility so we can have some more profitability on our contract. So I have a few, um, few trades that I'm going to go over today, and Spencer has a few trades as well. So to start, Airbnb is a really, really nice trade. Unlike some other stocks, it actually held up other than, um, or, or better than rather that, <laughs> there's a lot of other than and rather than, let me restart this. Airbnb held up a lot better than all their stocks. So this stock right here um, looks like it's got a lot more downside, pretty much all the way back down to this 90, but of course that's not going to happen in one day. Um, really, I am looking for, I'll just zoom in here on the hourly here. As you can see, we had this really harsh rejection and back test of this 112 after we had a big break of it um, back on the 22nd. So I'm looking for us, honestly, just to break these lows, this 104 level, take shorts under this 104 level, and I'll take it back down to this 100 to 101 area. And then if we do see some type of bounce, like say we see a bounce overnight in the futures, uh, right now we are a little bit red on the futures, but if we do see some type of bounce where we're kind of cooking back up to the upside. It'll be an excellent area in this 107.75 to 108 area, 108.75 for shorts. Again, enter for the same price target, 100. And then underneath 100, I mean, you do have some stops. You have a stop around 97.60. You have a stop around 95. But ultimately, going back down to test these lows at 90, this is a great trade. Um, as far as a day trade, I am looking at, you could take these 103 contracts if you'd like. I'm also interested in these hundreds. If we get the break below and no back test, I'm interested in the hundreds. If we do get a back test, I'll probably be more interested in these 103s or 104 contracts. Of course, shorts, uh, weeklies. So going forward, let's pick another trade here. PayPal 
is another interesting one. PayPal had a very, very large retracement here back to this 91 with the market, of course, um, once we had that bounce ish in the, I don't want to call it a bounce, but once we had that, that small green day, PayPal saw a lot of green off of this double bottom right here, this 84 area, but now retracing and in, in forming this M right here with a nice little neckline. So if we get up to this 88 level, this is what's desired for me. If we get up to this 88 level, got to load shorts, got to load shorts back down to this 84 area, then 82. And then underneath 82, you don't have very much support, kind of similar to that Airbnb trade, but honestly, just a little bit more held up than um, Airbnb itself. So inside of this 77 to 76 zone is definitely a feasible area for PayPal to pull back down to underneath this 82 ultimately. Um, so I'm pretty excited for this trade as well. You could take a short underneath this 85, 89, although it might not be the first short that I'm looking for. However, this is a great setup underneath this 80, 85, 80, 91, excuse me, down to this 84-ish to 83, 64 zone. And then again, uh, shorts inside of this 88 zone. So PayPal, PayPal's contracts are a little interesting here. Um, I do like these 80s. Those are a little far out the money. So if we have that break below, very interested in those 80s. However, if we were to get back up to that 88 level, I'd be looking towards these 85s um, or these 84s for shorts on the weekly contracts. Very, very nice trade or, or nice setup, excuse me, here. Um, another trade that I'm looking at is this Asana. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before. Asana is an HR company. The contracts are very interesting. They're not the most liquid, so they're not like Tesla where you can get in, get it out. They do have bid and ask spreads, so there's a spread in between the bid and the ask. Sometimes it gets a little crazy, so you just want to make sure that you are paying attention to your bid and ask spread and you're not getting too greedy with your contracts. Make sure you're selling into that volume, so it provides opportunity for easy sales. So underneath this 22, I am looking for us to ultimately just retrace back down to this 20, but realistically speaking, this company doesn't make too much money. I'm not so sure why this company's still up here. We do have this nice retracement here. This is a, a rising wedge and a downtrend here. So this is a very, very nice little pattern that we've got going on here. I also am very interested if we do again have a little bit of a retrace in the market to short at this 23.5 uh, to 23.16. The reason why this zone is so big in here, uh, that's really like 0.75% uh, zone. The reason why it's so big is because I don't want to miss this trade, to be honest. So I, I'm okay taking shorts on any little pop in here to pull it back down to this 20. I don't want to be stingy and make and it has to come back down to this 23.5. I missed my entry already at this 24 retracement. So I'm not doing it again. So um, I, I want to see us uh, uh, we'll come into this area. I'll take any short, I'll take shorts on any retracement and then also underneath this 22 for shorts as well. This is a nice thing about this stock. They only have monthly expiration, so you're forced to get that monthly expiration. So you're automatically going to have time, which means that you also could automatically just swing at the position, which is very, very nice. So if we had that break below that 22 level, I'll just be interested in these 20 puts. However, if we get that retracement back up, I'm interested to see what these 22 and a half puts drop down to and if they get um, continue to get significant volume here. Currently, the 20s have more OI than the 22 and a halfs, but the volume is um, greater on the 22 and a halfs. So I will be looking at the 22 and a half if we get that retrace, which would be super, super nice. That's an optimal entry. Um, other than that, we've got some other trades. Um, Spencer's got some other trades for you. Excuse me. So I'm going to just pass the mic to him. Yeah. First off, let's get into it. Let's go to Disney. It's bread and butter. Something I like to say before we really start off is that this isn't a period where you want to start trading a bunch of new stocks, especially with the balance that we need to be buying full of. I would say go to your bread and butters. Go to the stocks that you understand, understand contract-wise as well. You know, we hit a lot of the same stocks because we know those so well. We're comfortable and we know the ranges. Like everyone knows who's been following us on YouTube or in the Discord, Disney is my number one trade. I've traded this for forever now. That being said, Disney, I'm looking for an over uh, 95.41. I'm actually in some 95 put weeklies already swung up uh, 18% already on that trade obviously i'm looking towards the downside i think with the 10-year yield uh approaching that four it was at 3.8 something when i checked the last time and the two-year yield about to go over four three we're still gonna be on this downtrend so i'm looking for uh weekly puts i'm looking at a looking at a 95 like i said i was in uh but if we get under 94 15 i'm more interested on in going on that monthly strike to take a 90 put for 10 21. So I'm looking for under 94.15. First stop at 92.12. 
second at 90.25. Personally, uh, for the, talking about bottoms or where to pick up shares, I'm looking at 87 and potentially 79 on the long ways down. And that's something I'd like to say, uh, just a little note as well, is that we are seeing pretty rough conditions in the market, but just understand that you're going to have to dollar cost average in on any positions you're trying to build on. So just keep that in mind. But I'm looking at that 90 put for 1021. If it goes over that 95, 41, not really interested on that top side, I'll be looking at that 90 going out to that October 21st. Second trade I'm looking at is Tesla. Tesla just reported delivery numbers. Delivery, they delivered 343,000 vehicles, burst the streets, estimate of 364. They did produce 365 vehicles. Austin is maintaining a thousand dollar, a thousand car production uh per day on their line, or, or we I'll check it out, but they're uh they hit that thousand mark milestone in Austin. They also uh reported that they shut down the Shang high site for upgrades and they're back on regular schedule programming. They did shake up some in um internals when it comes to the executives, but they also uh have hit the most production they've had in all their facilities. So just something to keep an eye on. So for me, I think that their delivery report was pretty bullish. I have to check out what that Optimus robot is and hopefully I don't see it anytime soon. But that being said, I'm looking Tesla over 271.60. I'll be playing weeklies on Tesla just because of their report. I'm actually pretty bullish on the name. I'm looking at a 280 call for 475. Like I said, over 271.60. And me saying that, I think this stock can easily retrace to 285 at, you know, top side, maybe even 287 and a half pretty quickly where we're at. Now, we are going towards the bottom of this range. And Tesla does break that 260.29. I think it's going to 252.79. Not a lot of support. So obviously you're gonna have that psych level at 250. You'll be looking at a 250 put for 10.7. Like I said, I am bullish going into this name. Now also the market's gonna to have to keep up just because Tesla valuation, if we're going on just valuation, is overextended for the market it's in. So just keep that in mind. But I am looking for the upside on Tesla based off that report. Next, we're gonna to go to Apple which is pretty much controlling this market. And it broke down and fell down rather drastically. And honestly, I think a base here on Apple is going to be around that 130, if not all-time low is going towards that 125 for me personally. Not all-time low, but in that 125 range towards the bottom side, as you can see, Zach, Zach has to go way, way back to even try to find anything. So I'm thinking in that 120s is where we may settle out. That being said, uh, Apple over 141.40, more than welcome to play the 145s. We saw tremendous volume going in both directions. So just keep in mind, there's a lot of liquidity, a lot of volume in there. So you can have some great scalp trades. And I say scalp trades towards the top side because you can just see this push up, reject, push up, reject. And it's still, as of today, the number one shorted stock over Tesla and the regular market. So it is being heavily shorted. So that's why I would be skewed toward the downside. So, like I said, over 14140, you play the 145s. Under 137.12, you got two options here. I think the first stop this week is going to be the 133 puts. They're currently sitting at $1.40. Or if you wanted some time, there's a lot of people out on the 130s for 1021. Obviously, you got to pay a little more for that, but there are a ton of people there. And 130 just being a zero psych level, a lot of people going out there. So just something to just something to keep an eye out on. And my last trade of the week, kind of kind of interesting, is a uh, Starbucks. Actually, it's held up if you look at relative of how the market fell, pretty well in the last honestly last like week or two, which is pretty surprising to me. I think over 85, 85 30, you'd be looking towards the upside, more like eighty seven, um, eighty seven call weekly under this eighty three seventy six. I am looking at an eighty put going out to ten twenty one. Definitely need some time on Starbucks contracts in general, and they do move a lot. So just be very mindful when you're playing this stock, specifically the contracts. They do move pretty drastic, but in the right direction, they do start paying out pretty handily. So that's just kind of on my back burner. What I'm really looking for, honestly, I'll be watching the 1021 contracts going in either direction for honestly all of all the stocks on my watch list so you go down your watch list you're looking at amd you're looking at anything that you think's under your normal repertoire or your top 10 or 20 be looking to see when the volume starts flowing in on those monthly contracts because that's where the institutions will start buying into or they'll start loading into their positions 
if they're going to go option contract wise to uh, support a hedge. So that's something I'll be watching just because Q3 did end. We're going into Q4. So you should see some just naturally some buys flow in through the week. But you want to see where these large institutions are putting their wall in, e in either direction. So just be mindful, be mindful of the bounce. There are a couple, uh, there are five contracts that I'm looking at, just the contracts in general. Uh, first off, Baba, a 75 put for 10.7. If you look at Baba, Bo, Zach, and I took a look at this stock. We are extremely low. We see this thing coming down, 72, pretty much the bottom. We called this alert actually out in our Discord. So if you want to link to that, go ahead and check in the description to get that. Called this out at 63 cents, currently sitting at 74. We just see these contracts, this, this stock continue to dwindle down. China's not going to be a strong suit or where you want to go into, especially if Putin's threatening a nuke because China will have to back off and that will cause fears in China. So we're going to have to pull that off. I'm going 75 on Baba. So next one, Zach already mentioned this. I love the Airbnb's 100 puts. Me personally, I'll probably open one up beginning of the week and then add on a bounce. But that 100 put, solid. I mean, Baba had his, had his little retrace, couldn't hold up. So I really love that play. Good job, Zach. Uh, another one I'm looking at is Spy 340. 3,400 level on Spy is key. Now, there was a flow, a $5 million flow that came into SPY 340s for 10.5. Contracts went from $0.40 cents all the way up to $0.81 cents the next day, back down to $0.14, cents, and now they're holding at 40 The 3,400 level is a key support and is going to be a key fighting ground. We'll probably sit here for a week or a week and a half or November 18th, death day, right in your book, 100 basis points, still hammy, calling it out now. Anyway, SPY what I'm looking at is I'm already in the groups already made some good money off the three forties for 10, five. I'm looking at a spy three forty put for 10, seven sitting currently at 86 cents. I see further downside, especially we get under spy, get under towards that three fifty level three fifty two and a half and some change. We just came into this box. As you can see, Zach has it outlined and my chart is very similar with this little range he has right here. We get into that zone. Those three forties come into play. I think end of the week, we do have that jobs report. Like uh, Zach said, we could see some downside. So that's just what I'm interested in. There's a lot of volume. So just something to check out. That's the SPY 340 put for 10.7. Take a look at that really quick. Yeah, pull it up real quick. Thank you. Pretty cheap, honestly. 85 cents. But look at the nice. look at the volume and open interest. Yeah, that, there's a lot there. No, I'm just saying this is – it. It look it's a obviously it's a lot of strikes out. That's pretty far. However, I mean, that's pretty damn cheap. I mean, <laughs> I think you can you can use eighty five cents for sure. Eighty five bucks. You're thinking you're thinking you're taking this to dollar ten, dollar fifteen, easy win. That's what yeah. I'm thinking about. Obviously, three forty. We are we are seventeen dollars out. Not saying that that can't happen. If the ten year hits four, it's gonna have a a. If the ten year yield hits four percent. It's going to have a heavy reject when it hits that. We saw that last week. They went up to tap, got demolished. It goes again and confirms over. Then we could see a really we could see a red week coming in. So <laughs> I do like those spies. Uh, I got two more on the book. One's a little light, little chump change. We're going to affirm. I'm looking at a 15 put for 1021. Sitting around 61 cents. I'm looking for a break under that 17 and a half, but check out the check out the volume on these. Yeah, good volume and good open interest. Yeah. Holy shit. So just one of those contracts. Somebody loaded in heavy. I like to follow it. You know, obviously you can't follow every flow, but a firm does look 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 weak to me. Kind of in Zach's analysis with PayPal. Same thing I think with a firm. Just kind of weak in this area, honestly. Now you have to be careful. We get under the 18. You're going back down 16, 13. So 15 put with that 10 21 monthly strike will be. On point. And last but not least, we have to go visit our girl and America's girl, Kathy Woods. So we're going to ARC K Innovation Fund. Just something I saw here. Obviously, ARC's going to bounce around this level. If you haven't played ARC contracts, don't get frustrated until it breaks. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. I mean, these contracts, we're looking at the ARC 35 put weekly at 47 cents. Don't be frustrated if they go to 22 and sit at 22 for three days and then break and then we get paid at 80 85 cents but if you pull up that contract another one of those volume is just there and it's just something i want to get behind to have some little trades that could have potentially pop out so it's at 35 weekly 
What do you think, Zach? Uh, weekly. I'm sorry, I'm definitely. Whoa, that's a lot of volume. <laughs> Hello. Holy Yankee. <laughs> Back to Earth. I, I, the reason why I've been looking down is I've, I've been trading futures. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, sorry about that one. Um, yeah, that's a lot of volume. Also, got a lot of volume on these 42 and a half, but I'm not really so sure why you would be there. One, because why would you why would you be so loading the calls anyway? But two, it those are pretty cheap. So I feel like either people were said that was like a massive sell order, like people don't see it getting back above 42.5 by the end of the week, you know, something something like that. But that I don't know. That 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 a volume on the call. It's a lot of volume for there's a lot of volume for art art contracts in general. That's a lot of volume on one. I just yeah. Yeah, I mean, interesting. Very, very interesting. I mean, we've got some, I mean. October calls that makes a little bit more sense if you're wanting to hedge a share position or you're just wanting to, you know, start dipping into some some octo some monthly expiration dates for any type of balance. But a weekly doesn't make very much sense to me. This might be some selling pressure actually. Yeah. Um, that well, that's what we got for you guys. Like I said, yeah, be so mindful of the bounce. So. Yeah, definitely. Like we said, be mindful of the bounce. Hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of this. Obviously, this was a little bit more lax um, than maybe our previous episodes. We haven't episodes, um, videos. We haven't uh, done a watch list series in a, or, or video in a while. Um, we do host every single week to two free market prep sessions inside of our Discord. You can find the link inside of the description. Hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of this. If you guys are in the Discord and you're watching this because you couldn't attend, please check the premium and free watch list editions for our full write-up. It has a lot more of the kit. Of course, it includes the calendar and then it has more verbiage as to our opinions on some of the news and how it's going to affect this week. So anyway, if you guys did enjoy the video, please leave a subscription and a like. It really, really helps us out. We did break 200 subs a little bit ago um, and we're slowly, slowly grinding up and up. So we really appreciate all the support. Any feedback is very, very helpful. And this has been Zach and Spencer from iTrans. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.